recording. We're recording. We're on Facebook Live. Hey, we're on Facebook Live. Hey, out there, Facebook family, as we come together today to worship the Lord God. The Lord God is a sun and shield. He gives grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you. He will bless you. Trust him with all your heart. Trust him with all your heart. Do not lean unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. The Lord God, I said earlier, and I'll say it again, is a sun and shield. He gives grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Praise God. I thank God for this new day. I thank God for you. I thank God for the USA. I thank God for the whole world. I thank God for our friends in other nations. Thank God for our friends in Kenya, Tanzania, uh, France, England, Germany, in Asian countries, in South American countries, and all across this great country. And let us not forget Jamaica and the Caribbean. Hey, Bishop Davis, and all of our friends down in the Caribbean, we love you. Hey, Power of Faith Ministry, we give a shout out to you. Praise God. Thank you, Father. I thank God that we were able to wake up this morning. Aren't you glad God woke you up this morning? Praise God. Your bed could have been your cooling board. But thanks be to God, his grace and his mercy. We ought to give a shout out to God every day. Every day that we have breath in our bodies, we need to give a shout out to God. He's wonderful. Oh, every day may not be what you want it to be, but bless God, you're still here. God has a plan. He said in Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you. So every day might be might not be beautiful, but God knows the plans he has for you. Praise God. I thank God. I thank God for his plan for me. I thank God that years ago he snatched me from a life of sin, showed me grace and mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not deserve such grace and such mercy. Thanks be unto God. Thanks for the gift of salvation and eternal life. And thank God that I'm becoming what he wants me to be. Every day is not easy. The road is rough. The going gets tough and the hills get hard to climb. But I made up my mind a long time ago. I decided to follow Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't lose with Jesus on your side. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. The scripture even says when the enemy comes upon me like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against them. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Oh, I know your body might still have some aches and pains. You may still uh, have some symptoms of sickness, but the Lord said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's a word. That's a word from heaven. I am the Lord that healeth thee. So you just wait on the Lord. We've got to learn how to wait on the Lord. You may say, well, pastor, I've been waiting. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. Well, keep on waiting because God is not a man that he should lie. He knows when to bless you. He knows how to bless you. God's got his timing. Your prayers are not in vain, nor is your labor in vain in the Lord. The scripture tells us, be ye therefore steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So learn how to wait on him. There was a woman in the scripture. She waited uh, 12 long years. She had an issue of blood for 12 long years. She waited on the Lord. And then one day Jesus came by. Ladies and gentlemen, he may not come when you want him, 
but I got a witness in my sanctified soul that he's right on time. He knows when to show up and he knows how to show up and he will show out. So you just wait on him. You tell the arthritis, pack up, you got to go. You tell that cancer, pack up, you've got to go. In the name of Jesus, I'm healed. You've got to stand on the word of God and don't take down, ladies and gentlemen. Every day won't be rosy. Every day won't be peaches and cream, but you wait on the Lord. The scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord, come on, Facebook family, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint it. Job waited on the Lord. Job's sickness had him so messed up. He was sitting out on the town dump. He was sitting out there among the garbage and the debris. His wife had deserted him. She said to Job, you may as well curse God and die. God doesn't even think about you anymore. And he told, told her she was out of her mind. He sat there. His best friends came to him. They read him the riot act. They accused him of being holier than thou. They accused him of having unclean sin in his life, unconfessed sin, secret sins. But Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives. Oh, I feel good today, ladies and gentlemen. I feel good. Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives and I shall see him at the latter day. We've got to learn how to wait on the Lord. Ryan Trogler, you might be out there on with your truck on the highway. The traffic might be all jacked up, but you just wait on the Lord. Amen. Andy McBride, you might be having difficulties, but you wait on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. <clears throat> they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Facebook family, wait on the Lord. You may say, well, I tried church. I tried this. I tried that. Nothing seems to work. Well, you get back in the battle. Get back up. You may say, well, Satan knocked me down and I just lay there for a while. <clears throat> get back up, I say. Get up. Get up. Or as James Brown <clears throat> told MC Hammer, he said, God's son, get up. He said, get up. Get up. I sound like a Baptist preacher. Get up. I sound like a holiness preacher. Get up. James Brown told MC Hammer, Hammer, he said, Hammer, God's son, get up. Don't just lay there. Don't just take what the devil's putting on you. You put your trust in the Lord. The scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I wonder, can I get a witness out there? Amen. I can I get a witness out on Facebook land that they that wait upon the Lord, Job waited on the Lord and the Lord showed up. Ladies and gentlemen, Job, as sick as he was with the dogs licking his wounds, with all kinds of things happening in his life, his wife deserted him. His kids had been killed. He lost everything he had. His best friends turned him against him. Ladies and gentlemen, Job was most messed up, but he said, I know that my Redeemer lives. I put my trust in the Lord and I won't turn around. I won't turn around. That's what gets you the victory, ladies and gentlemen. That pain may be racking your body. The doctors may have given you a bad report, but you just wait on the Lord. Dr. Jesus has yet to diagnose your situation. Dr. Jesus has yet to give you a review of your situation. And when you turn it over to Jesus, he'll make it right. He's a doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. Somebody said he's a bridge over troubled water. He's the bright and morning star. Weeping may endure for a night. You may have cried all night, but joy comes in the morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking to somebody out there been crying. Joy comes in the morning. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. 
I decided to make Jesus my choice. I decided to make Jesus my choice. Some of you out there, you started off with Jesus and you turned around. You backslid. You just turned back. Get back up. James Brown said to MC Hammer, God's son, get up. Uh, get up. Uh. I say to you, get up. Uh. Get back up. Get in the race. Run the race with patience. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. You may say, well, pastor, it's too late for me. Oh, no, 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 no. Al contraire. It is never too late. Get back up. Get back up. Get back up and call on the name of the Lord. Call on him with all your heart. He will hear your feeble cry. He'll answer by and by and learn how to wait on the Lord. Learn, I say, how to wait on the Lord. Praise God. Well, this is Pastor Leroy Carter welcoming you to the Back to Basics Online Church. Amen. No commercials, no cake sales, no no selling chicken dinners, no selling pig's feet and chitlin dinners. We present the word of God. We worship God. We don't ask for an offering. The plate's not going to go around three or four times. We don't want to pick your pocket. We just want to tell you about the love of Jesus Christ. We want to declare that Jesus Christ is Lord no matter what's going on around you, no matter what's happening in your country, no matter what's happening in your government, no matter what's happening in your community, no matter what's happening in your household, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. God is still on the throne. When I woke up this morning, I realized God is still on the throne. He did not abdicate his throne overnight. He did not run and desert his people. He still stands up for his people. You just wait on him. Call on him. Call on him. Repent of your sins. Tell God you're sorry that you have sinned against him. Ask him to restore you, to renew you. And if you're not saved, get saved today. Get saved today. Well, what do you mean, preacher? Get saved today. I mean that you can get the gift of salvation. It is free. It's the gift of God. Salvation will mean that you are snatched from the devil's grip. You, you will be released from the devil's prison. You will be changed from darkness into the marvelous light. You will become a member of God's own family. Jesus Christ will be your Lord and Savior. The Holy Ghost will live in you. Your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life, sealed by the Holy Ghost. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. You may say, well, I'm too far gone to get saved. No, no, no. Al contraire. You're never too far gone to be saved. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Get saved today. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. Do that right now. Ask Jesus to come into your life. Ask Jesus to forgive you of all of your sins. Tell God you're sorry. Tell him you need help. You need his help. Tell him you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and ask Jesus to come into your life to be your Savior and your Lord, and you will be saved. You will be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, you will be saved. Just trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. I made that decision almost 40 years ago, and God has not failed me yet. He's never failed me. He's never failed me yet. Everywhere I go, I want the world to know that Jesus Christ is Lord and God will never fail. He will keep you. Well, bless God. I just want to share with you in the next few moments reasons why your prayers are not answered, part two. Reasons why. You may say, well, you've been preaching already, Pastor. Yeah, well, let me preach for another 15 minutes. This message will bless you. It'll set you free. Some of you wonder why your prayers are not answered. You've been praying. You've been asking God for this for a long time, and you haven't gotten the answer. Well, today I'm going to review the three reasons I gave you last week about why your prayers 
are not answered. Why God does not hear your prayer? In part one, we looked at three reasons why God uh, does not hear your prayers. And we gave you the following reasons. Let's stop, take a prayer break. Let's get the Holy Ghost in on this, that he's the teacher. We want to make sure we're on the right page. And, and we give God the glory. We honor the Holy Spirit. I cannot preach without the Holy Ghost. It is not of my own power or might. It's the anointing, the anointing. You can't hear the word without the Holy Ghost. You can't even pray without the Holy Ghost. So let's invite him in. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you, ask that you forgive me of my sins and forgive the people of their sins. Lord, raise, raise up your mighty hand today. Rise up, Holy Ghost, in us. We acknowledge you and we trust you to guide us and lead us this day. You are God. Have your own way. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, last week, and you can get last week's message on www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com. That message is found on www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com. And today's message and all of our messages are found on that website. Just go on the website and scroll down and pick out your message. Every one of them will bless you. Last week, we looked at three reasons why God does not hear your prayers. I'm just going to read those three then I'm going to give you three more then we're going to wrap up this two-part series number one reason number one God will not answer our prayers when they are not according to his will <laughs> ladies and gentlemen you can pray until hell freezes over you can pray until the cows come home but God is not gonna hear your prayers Psalm 66 18 says if I regard iniquity in my heart, he will not even hear me. If I know that I know that I know that I know there's sin in my heart. If I know there's an idol in my heart. If I know that I'm not right. If I know that I'm at uh, conf in conflict with my neighbor. If I know I've got hatred in my heart, bitterness and jealousy and anger. If I know there's resentment in me. God will not hear my prayers. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen. You must repent. You must confess your sins. You can pray all night long. You can pray until uh, the, the Lake Michigan turns green without the artificial coloring on St. Patrick's Day. You can pray until Lake Erie, Matt, uh, Matt Borland, turns yellow. But those prayers are in vain if you've got bitterness hardness in your heart an idol adultery lust you've got evil pride in your heart and you won't, you won't confess those things god's not going to hear you some of you listening in today you've been praying for healing but you won't forgive your neighbor you've been praying for healing but you won't forgive your mama you've been praying for healing but you won't forget your son or daughter Forgive your son or daughter. You've been praying for healing, but you won't forgive that person who harmed you. God's not going to hear your prayer. You can get a million people on Facebook to pray for you. You can get a prayer chain, a prayer line, prayer warriors. You can start a prayer school, but God won't even hear you if you regard iniquity in your heart. I say God won't even hear you if you regard iniquity in in your heart if you know that you know that you know that's in the word of God Psalm 66 18 says if I regard iniquity in my heart God won't even hear me that's the word of God you can't change it I can't change it you can tithe you can give all your all your uh, gifts all your property to the poor you can feed the hungry you can build churches you can build schools you can uh, build a new world system, but God will not hear you. Ladies and gentlemen, what does it profit a man or a woman to gain the whole world and lose your soul? Why do you want to lose your soul? Because you're still mad at little Willie John for what he said to you back in 1959. 
Why would you lose your soul because you won't forgive that man who, who defrauded you, who cheated you, who stole your virginity, uh, who stole your money, who stole your happiness, stole your peace? Why would you bust hell wide open when all you have to do is say, I forgive uh, Homer Jones, I forgive Johnny Smith, I forgive that person for what they did uh, to me. Why would you lose your salvation because you're stuck on, on being victimized? You're stuck on being hurt. You can't get past being hurt. Well, no, you can't get past being hurt. You need the Holy Ghost to help you to transcend that gulf, that hurt, that pain, that deception, that defrauding. It's, that's the Holy Ghost job. So why don't you move over? And let Jesus take over. Move over and let Jesus take over. Don't be so proud and so stubborn. You can say, I got this. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm got, I got this. No, you don't have this. And you know that you don't. Quit perpetrating. Quit deceiving yourself. Quit defrauding yourself. Quit lying to yourself. God is not a man that he should lie. He said, if I regard iniquity in my heart. He will not even hear me. So confess your sins. Confess that bitterness. Confess that anger. Confess uh, that uh, anger and resentment over that person who hurt you or those people who hurt you. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. And I say to my black brothers and sisters out there, you need to forgive white folks. Quit being so resentful, so bitter. And I, I want to tell all my friends, stop sending me all this racist stuff. Uh, about uh, uh, white people and this and that. White people are my friends. Black people are my friends. No, I'm not Uncle Tom. And I'm Jesus. And I'm Jesus. And I'm Jesus. And I'm filled up with Jesus. I get sick and tired of getting your messages about hatred of white people. And then white people, I get tired of your messages about hatred of black people. You all need to repent. You need to repent. Preachers, you need to repent. Bishop, you need to repent. You say you're saved. If you're saved, then you ought to love everybody. If you say you're saved, you ought to stop the racial uh, uh, profiling. If you say you're saved, you ought to stop putting down somebody whose skin color is different. If you say you're saved, then you ought to change your attitude towards them. I know this is tight, but it's right. I know it's tight, but it's right. If you're a preacher, you ought to stop being so bitter. How do you expect God to hear your prayers when you're bitter? And then I want to talk to you slick, uh, subtle preachers out there. You, you, and, 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 and then I want to talk to you punks out there, you punks in the pulpit. Some of you punks in the pulpit, you never speak out against racism. You're so uh, afraid of losing your audience, so afraid of losing your support, so afraid of losing uh, uh, your contacts, you're so afraid of people not liking you that, and you're a preacher of the gospel, and you're you're a so-called uh, uh, evangelical. And if you're evangelical, I want to see some evangelicals stand up and preach out against racism. I want to hear some white evangelicals tell some white folks to stop hating black folks. I want to hear some black evangelicals telling black folks to stop hating white folks. That's what I want to hear. Oh, I know it's tight, but it's right. But if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, then you ought to love everybody. Jesus Christ hung and died on the cross for everybody. I know I'm still on part one in last week's review. So Jesus said, he told us that if we pray amiss, if we're not praying according to his will, he won't even hear us. Some of you slick, smooth talking, uh, 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 good looking preachers out there, you're so afraid to speak up even to your own congregations about racism. I call you a punk in the pulpit, a punk in the pulpit. If I were out in the world, I'd call you something worse than that. But I ain't in the world anymore. So I ain't going to go there, Andy Mack. I ain't going to go there with it. Number two, God will not hear your prayers if they are designed to fulfill some inner lust. You're lusting after your neighbor's wife, or you're lusting after your neighbor's husband, 
or your neighbor, uh, you're married, you're lusting after some other flesh, uh, or you're you're a man and you're after you're lusting after some strange flesh from another man, or you're a woman, you're lusting after strange flesh from another woman. God won't answer your prayer. You can be the bishop, you can be the pastor, you can be the founder of the church, but God will not hear your prayers. You must be born again. And when you're born again, the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So if you're praying with an inner lust in your heart, God is not going to hear you. If you're praying and you know that you know that you've got lust and pride, in your heart. You've got an idol in your heart. God will not even hear you. Then number three, in our review of last week, God will not even hear our prayers if we insist on not showing him any assistance in getting the answer. Well, what do you mean by that? I mean that if we don't show God some assistance in getting the answer, God's not even going to hear our prayer. For example, you're praying for a job. You got everybody on Facebook praying that you get a job. You're praying for a house. Uh, you got everybody and their brother on Facebook praying for a house or an apartment for you. But you too blessed God lazy. You're so blessed God lazy. You're not even out there looking for a job. You expect a miracle to drop in your lap. You're not even looking for a house. You're not even looking for what you're asking for. You're just praying amiss. Ladies and gentlemen, you're wasting your time and God's time. God is not going to give you a job if you're too blessed God lazy to go knocking on doors, looking in the want ads, going out, uh, letting the rubber meet the road, uh, hitting the sidewalk with your feet. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to do things to help yourself. Which brings us to part two. And I'll give you three more reasons why God will not hear your prayers, then we'll wrap this thing up. We'll pray for one another. We'll celebrate God, and we just wait on the Lord. Hallelujah for the results. I guarantee you, God will show up when you apply the word of God to your, to your life. Number four in our two-part series on why God does not hear your prayer, God will not hear your prayers. If you have a secret grudge against another person, uh-oh, 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 see, see that preacher, see now you meddling, you ain't pre, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't understand how people can say that, you know, they hate the preacher, you ain't preaching now, you meddling, well, what is preaching? Preaching is supposed to expose sin, preaching is, is, is designed to preach the word of God, and God God would like to speak to you himself, but you, you're you too stubborn to hear. You So you pick and choose your preachers. Some of you out there, you're not being blessed because you pick and choose your preachers. You turn off the ones you don't like, and if one's preaching the truth and, and the truth is coming down your street, he's driving in your lane, you're going you're gonna to just cut him off. Ladies and gentlemen, the gospel is quicker and sharper than any two Ed sword. If you're a homosexual and you you like men, you you sleep with men, and and you and that's an abomination. God said it in His Word, but see, you don't read the Word anymore. But when the preacher preaches about it, he's meddling. He ain't preaching. He's meddling. Well, I'd rather be a meddler. I'd rather preach what God said to me than to be a punk and say, "I know God. I was scared to preach to him because I didn't want them to unlike me. I didn't want them." Uh, to, to shut me off. I didn't want them to stop li liking me. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd rather God love me and all of you hate me than to disobey God and to be afraid of preaching the gospel. See, it's the preaching of, of the gospel, the foolishness of preaching the gospel that confounds the whole world. Satan hates it when we preach the gospel. And God said his word will not return unto him void. So I preach it and I let the Holy Ghost have his way. I preach it, then I move over and let the Holy Ghost take over. Hallelujah. So number four, 
God will not answer our prayers if we hold a secret grudge against another. So confess that sin. Tell that brother, tell that sister you love them. Tell them you forgive them for what they've done. God's not going to hear your prayers if you're jealous of somebody, envious of somebody, envious of some your neighbor because they got a new car. Yeah, that's stupid. Envious of your neighbor because he got a new house. Envious of your neighbor, jealous because you uh, they got a promotion on their job. That's stupid. You ought to bless your neighbor. You ought to praise God for blessing your neighbor. We're all uh, in this life together. We're all God's children. And as you bless others, God will bless you. Some of you won't get blessed and you will not get blessed because you're so hard hearted that you have no love for anybody else but you. That pride, that self-centeredness is you, you, you. It's all about you, you, you. You need to repent. When God blesses others, it doesn't phase you one bit. It makes you angry. And then you start hating on those people. Actually, what you're doing, you're hating God, but you're scared to tell him. But God knows God is not stupid. So repent. Just repent, ladies and gentlemen. Number five, God will not hear our prayers if we do not expect him to. Now, let me let me just specify this. God will not hear our prayers if we do, do not expect him to. There are a lot of people praying and they don't expect an answer. There are a lot of people praying and, 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 and to bless God impatient to wait for an answer. You say a little prayer as you're uh, grabbing your car keys to dash out the door to go to work. You say a little prayer, God guide me today, and you rush out there. No communion with God, no fellowship with God. You don't expect God to do anything. You're, you're hoping God to be like Santa Claus, be like Frosty the Snowman, a uh, jolly happy soul, and, 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 and somehow cover you. You expect God to, to uh, 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 do something for you, but you're not willing to spend time. You've got to learn how to get on knee bone station, knee bone station and talk with God. God made you to fellowship with him. He made you to talk with him, commune with him, but you don't have the time. You don't have the time to talk with God. The one who saved your soul, the one who died on the cross for you. No wonder he doesn't hear your, your prayers. You don't have time for him. And when you do, the little bit of time you're given, you don't expect him to answer. How many of you really wait for God to answer when you pray? I don't see too many hands up. I don't see any hands in the chat window. I see you dashing off a quick prayer, hoping for a miracle, a quick miracle, a quick fix, like an alka seltzer, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Or a, a pop and a leave. You think that your prayer is going to be like popping in a leave tablet. That prayer, that pain's going to be going in, in, in 35 seconds. God doesn't work like that. God is looking for people who will worship him, who will worship him. Facebook family, God is looking for people who will worship him and worship him in spirit and in truth. In good times, in bad times, you're worshiping God. You're putting God first in your life. He has preeminence in your life. Nothing uh, supersedes God in your life. And you, you learn how to talk with him and you learn how to converse with him. You give him the time. You give him the opportunity. Give God the respect to speak back to you. God wants to talk to so many of you, but you're in such a big hurry. There are so many of you, you're afraid of quiet. You can't stand being quiet. You got to have your phone on, your TV on, your music on. You got to have, it's like, it's like ADHD Christians. ADHD, I guess those are the four letters. You're ADHD. You got problems. You can't quiet yourself down. You can't settle yourself down. You always got to be active, running here and there. Well, God wants you to slow down. Slow down. And that is why every now and then God might permit you to be slowed down. And if he slows you down, don't get mad at him. Don't get mad at the world because you got sick. God might be using that sickness 
to slow you down, to get your attention. He wants to talk with you. Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 3.22, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Notice, that door does not have an, a, a doorknob on the outside. The hinge or the knob is on the inside. Only you can open that door and let Jesus in. But if you're so busy running to your third job, to your second job, you're so busy, got to go to the mall, got to go to my church. My church is having a dinner. Then we're going uh, to the movies, then to a play. Uh, 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 a lot of you are killing yourself in the church, church work, church work. And, and all of this work is not of the Lord. Some of you need to slow down and smell the coffee. Slow down and smell the coffee. S smell it. Smell the aroma. Smell that good Folgers. Ah, that sip was good. Some of you need to slow down and taste it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And number six, reason number six in our two-part series, why God does not answer your prayers. God does not answer our prayers when we tell him how to answer us. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Some of us are so blessed, God, self-centered, got to have things our way that we think we're so audacious. We've got the audacity to tell God the creator of the universe, how to answer our prayers. And we tell him when. And some of you name it and claim it. Some of you Holy Ghost filled, so-called, so-called Holy Ghost filled, deeper life, deeper truth, Christians. Name it, claim it, speak it, and it's yours. I remember back in the 70s and 80s, name it and claim it. You have what you say. You have what you say out of your mouth. Yes, you do. But if you're not right, if you got bitterness in your heart, you've got ought against someone else. You've got hidden sin. You got a secret sin. Uh, you you're a pastor of church, but you're sleeping with the deacon's wife. God's not going to hear you. You're messing up the whole congregation. You need to repent. And so stop telling God how to answer you. Well, God, I want you to show up by midnight tonight, and and I claim this. I I, I declare not. I, I, I prophesy and I declare that by midnight tonight, this cancer will be gone, will be gone in my body. Well, ladies and gentlemen, God may not move that way. Because first of all, he's the creator. And the creature should not tell the creator what to do. Now, I know in scripture, God said, command me. But when you command God, you better have stuff in order, lined up in order. Ladies and gentlemen, don't play with God. Don't play with God. And some of you preachers need to stop playing with people. Some of you need to stop playing with people, commanding God. Uh, you're, you're very impressive in some of your services. But if it ain't right, don't do it. Don't play with God. God is not a man that he should lie. God is holy. God is righteous. God is just. God is sovereign. We need to humble ourselves before the Lord. We need to come before his presence with joy, thanksgiving in our heart. You've got an attitude. You can't come to God any way you want to. So stop perpetrating. Stop trying to influence God. Do what the scripture says. Don't tell God how to do his work. Ask him. Jesus said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. I'm going to repeat this, especially to those of you who like to tell God. I mean, you're, you're so bossy. You're so bossy. You got everything got to be your way. You're so bossy. You even boss God. Well, God, this is what I want today with your proud, puffed up self. You need to humble yourself before the mighty hand of God and ask God. The scripture says, whatsoever things you uh, ask God for believing in your heart, you shall receive them. That if thou will uh, uh, confess those things in your heart, believing, you shall have them. But that's a way of asking. Jesus said, ask 
and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. And then wait on the Lord. Once you ask God, you keep on worshiping him. You keep on praising God. You keep on saying hallelujah to the king of kings, to the God of all creation. You keep on worshiping him. And if your situation even gets worse, you double up on your praise and worship. You keep worshiping God. You let God know that you're going to wait like Job until your change comes. Ask and it shall be given. Seek, you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Don't tell God how to do his job. God was around a long time before you came and he's going to be around a long time after you're gone. You're just like a vapor, just like a breath of air on the uh, scene of, of, of life. You're just like dew. Uh, falls at night, it's found in the morning, it's gone by midday. So who are you to tell God what to do? Who are you to tell God how to do his job and when to do the job? And, 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 and some of you are so bossy, uh, you, you want to tell God, and I want it by a certain time. Come on, humble yourself, ladies and gentlemen. That's why your prayers are not being answered. You're trying to command God. You might boss people in your house. You might boss people on your job. You might even boss people in the church. But you can't boss God around. God is sovereign. God is holy. God is righteous. He's to be worshipped. Approach him with fear and trembling. I mean, God's not Santa Claus. He's not Howdy Duty. He's not Deputy Dog. He's not... Uh, 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 the mailman. He's not the guy who makes your pizza at the pizza joint. He's God. Treat him that way. Show him reverence and respect. And then trust him. Learn how to wait on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They should walk and not faint. And ladies and gentlemen, when God blesses you, hallelujah, when your blessing comes, praise him, worship him, honor him. Tell somebody else what God has done. Tell them that God did this. Give God the glory. He's worthy to be praised. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him at noonday. Praise him in the evening. Even praise him in your sleep. When God answers your prayer, thank him. Show your honor and your respect. And so we've just finished a two-week, two-part series on why God does not answer our prayers. I've given you six reasons. Go back and review the video www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com. Or send me an email, I'll send it to you, Leroy Carter69 at yahoo.com. Or give me a call, 404 205 1101. God wants you to know the truth. He said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, I didn't say anything about going to church to get your blessing. Some of you believe that attending church is going to get your blessings because. Well, God, because I go to church three times a Sunday and I go to church 52 times a week, three times a Sunday, that does not guarantee God's going to answer your prayer. You may go to church and be one of the biggest hell raisers in town. You must be born again. You must be a child of God and have a childlike faith. So ask God to create you a clean heart, renew a right spirit within you. Ask God to give you a teachable, childlike attitude, a humble spirit. Praise God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I hope that this message has blessed you. Now let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Let's believe God to hear our prayer. Father God, in Jesus' name, I've given to your people what you've required. 
concerning hearing prayers. I know there are more reasons why you don't hear prayers, but I've given you the six reasons. Help them, Lord, to review those reasons and make whatever adjustments are necessary. I pray that each one of us will humble ourselves before you. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us in the areas where we've missed you. Correct those areas and help us to wait on you. Help us to let the Holy Spirit do the work. Help us to pray and wait on you, Lord. Forgive us for trying to tell you how to do your job. We repent, Lord. We trust you. We believe you. You're God. You're sovereign. Now, Lord, we pray that you'll save people today. Deliver them. Restore any backslider in the name of Jesus. If any have turned their backs to you, help them to return to you. And Father, bless this ministry. Let it reach the nations for your name's sake. And Lord, we pray that souls be touched all over the world. We bless your honor and thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise God. Amen.